Do you ever experience itching when you work out? This could be a sign of exercise-induced urticaria. It ranges from mild inconvenience to medical emergency. It's Dr. Victoria and George. This condition presents as diffuse warmth or flushing, itching, and urticaria, a blotchy rash. There can also be sudden fatigue and it can progress to angioedema, swelling of the face and throat, or even anaphylaxis, a major allergic reaction. So how do we manage this condition? One way is by avoiding solid food four to six hours before exercise. It can be helpful to make your workout first thing in the morning. You can also avoid triggers if you have identified them, such as medications or allergens. It may be important to carry an epinephrine auto injector and take a second generation H1 blocker prior to exercise or daily, such as Zyrtec, Allegra, or Claritin. When resuming exercise, this should be done gradually, preferably with a companion. Let's take the example of George. He has been on a new exercise regime, but every time he starts running, after about 10 minutes, he gets this awful itch. What is happening to George is he, he has this exercise-induced urticaria. Although this is usually triggered by an allergen, it can also be triggered by a physical stimulus such as cold temperatures, vibration, vigorous exercise, or even lower intensity exercise like doing yard work or brisk walking. Some common triggers include foods, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs like naproxen or ibuprofen, alcohol, extreme heat or cold exposure, and seasonal allergens. Besides the rash, symptoms include itching, diffuse warmth or flushing, and sudden fatigue. These episodes can progress to angioedema of the face and extremities, as well as laryngeal edema, and worst case scenario is that anaphylaxis with hypotension. However, it usually resolves within 30 minutes to four hours after stopping exercise. We treat this by avoiding those co-triggers if we know what they are and not eating solid food at least four to six hours before exercise. Because of the risk of possible anaphylaxis, keep that epinephrine pen handy. And the second generation antihistamines for most people do the trick, like I mentioned before. However, if a patient has refractory symptoms, they may respond to second line treatments such as Montelukast or Omalizumab. Exercise can be restarted with a gradual increase as tolerated. First generation H1 blockers such as Benadryl or hydroxyzine are sedating and are usually not preferred. Treatments that we use for regular chronic urticaria like Montelukast, H2 blockers like famotidine and oral steroids have not been studied in exercise induced urticaria so we don't have as much evidence or even the recommendation that we should use those. So at least George knows what he should be doing next. He can take his antihistamine. His is mild. He does not need an EpiPen. But if you think you have this, you should ask your doctor. And I know I've got some Allegra in the pantry, so he can have that before he goes on his next run. And he can take his run first thing in the morning before he has breakfast. Thank you for joining me today, my healthcare team. I hope you'll join us next time to see what George gets up to next. I'll have some links below on some of those medications that are available over the counter and you can check them out if you like. Bye-bye.